and welcome to the February 2016 edition of Outlook Video, your nationally recognized award-winning news magazine for LGBT communities. I'm Christine Hancock. And I'm Johnny Zick. Mm -hmm. At the end of last year, the Bay Area Video Coalition celebrated the year in review and recognized those who have volunteered their time and talents at the first SF Commons Awards and Recognition Ceremony held at the Mission Cultural Center for Latino Arts in the Mission District of San Francisco. Outlook Video was the recipient of the award for community content for our May 2015 edition of Outlook Video, featuring Roberta gonzalez Gregg with Edward Tang of Tang Scholarship, Christine Conkel with Apple Lambda founder Bennett Marks, Roberta with Mike Ryan of Santa Cruz Shakespeare, and clips from Raymond Donald Hong's coverage of Oakland Pride 2014. Congratulations to us all! Many members of the LGBT community remember the 1980s with great sadness when we were deep in the throes of the AIDS epidemic, losing far too many of our family and, disease and, and friends to the disease. Great strides have been made since then to manage the AIDS HIV disease. Yet the need to bring this disease to an end remains. Tonight, Roberta gonzalez Gregg and Kim Lawson join Santa Clara County Board Supervisor Ken Yeager in his office to speak about his Getting to Zero initiative to help eradicate this disease. As our LGBT community has fought for acceptance and basic human rights over many years, we've been constantly attacked by religious extremists using phrases hatefully selected from their sacred texts. More recent local, national, and world news has brought us many stories of horrific terrorist events, often with six claims of religious righteousness. Bennett Marks returns to us this month to share some thoughts on religion in his commentary later in our show. We originally interviewed author Judy Ricard in 2011, the year she published her book, Torn Apart, United by Love, Divided by Law, that put a human face on the lives of binational same-sex couples facing insurmountable odds trying to stay together. To round out this month's show, we'll bring you a look back at our 2013 segment when Raymond Donald Hong had a scholarship interview with Judy Ricard and her UK citizen spouse, Karen Boliolo, to review the developments in getting Karen into the county as a legal resident. Stay with us for all that, but now let's join Roberta gonzalez Gregg and Kim Lawson in the office of Santa Clara County Board Supervisor, Ken Yeager. I'm Chris Perry, and you're watching Outlook Video. And I'm Sandy Steer, and you're watching Outlook Video. With World AIDS Day recently behind us, new attention is being brought to HIV and AIDS and it's rekindling a lot of stories. Tonight, we focus on Getting to Zero, the theme selected by World AIDS Campaign to achieve zero HIV infections, zero discrimination, and zero AIDS-related diseases. Outlook Video is at the Santa Clara County Board of Supervisors offices of Supervisor Ken Yeager where he is promoting a local initiative of Getting to Zero. Outlook Video Co. welcomes District 4, Santa Clara County Supervisor Ken Yeager. Mr. Yeager, thank you for letting us come into your, into your offices here. Yeah. Or having us make a studio out of your office. Thank you for that. <laughs> sure. Um, now then, you've been a, an advocate for um, AIDS and HIV for quite some time. First an advocate, yes. Yes. Then a councilman for San Jose. Right. And now a supervisor for That's Santa right. Clara County. So you've got a little bit of history behind you on doing this kind of thing. I have a lot of history behind <laughs> me. <laughs> now, then most of us, and myself included, think of HIV and AIDS as something that's been under control and now is kind of not so, kind of like, you know, under the radar. However, this is now resurfacing and is coming back to us in many different ways along with this getting to zero. Um, tell us a little bit about getting to zero on your part. Yes, you know, AIDS, of course, has never really gone away. Um, uh, certainly the infection rates and the uh, deaths have, have increased uh, significantly, you know, over the decades, which is, which is great. Uh, but we are finding that there are uh, increases in the number of people um, being infected um, with HIV. So uh, for, for many years, the numbers were dropping uh, yes. overall, but now they're rising again, uh, mainly uh, with younger um, gay and bisexual men. Um, and in particular, uh, men of color, uh, in particularly in the Latino community. Okay. Now, is this is there a reason for this that there's this we had it seemed to have things going along smoothly, and now, as you say, there's been more infections. Is, yeah. What's what's causing this? Well, what is yeah, this and I, I, it could well be that um, 
in, in the past, uh, there was uh, much knowledge mm -hmm. about HIV, but you know, when you think of a young person um, who maybe still be experimenting um, you know, sexually um, and just doesn't have the information or believe that HIV is more under control, uh, mm -hmm. it's hard to know uh, for sure. Mm -hmm. um, but we do know that the numbers are rising. Um, any infection is, is one too many. And sure. so it's, uh, it's been gratifying uh, for me who uh, has been uh, dealing with um, HIV AIDS issues and saw so many friends um, die because of it to actually trying to get the county on the forefront of doing everything that we can so there are no more infections, uh, as, as you said, that there's no more stigma and that there's no more deaths. And so I, I, I personally have a lot um, uh, invested, uh, you know, in my community, and want to make sure that I can do everything I can to protect uh, the safety and the health of uh, of our community. Okay, so there's a, a bit of a gap in, in education and awareness yes, as yes. far as the community goes. Now, for community services, you say you're doing your best for that, and we appreciate that a great deal. But some time ago, you brought a proposal to the city council before you were uh, on the supervisors at that time um, uh, to do some education and awareness. Uh, uh, for HIV. Now you've got this other initiative uh, started for getting to zero. Tell us a little bit about that particular initiative and was it was it welcomed at the time and is it welcome now? Um, it's more welcome now and there's just yeah. uh, you know the, the thankfully this the, the stigma um, is is not as great as it used to be um, and of course there are so many medical advances and so you can right. have um, uh, campaigns like getting to zero um, mm -hmm. because you know there's because of PrEP and because of PEP and any number of of uh, new medicines that are available you really can certainly you know reduce the risk of getting HIV or if you have HIV uh, to be able to manage it in ways that never happened before so part of the uh, getting to zero campaign here, there's two parts. One is certainly to educate our community about what resources are available, but we have to remember that PrEP and PEP are still relatively new, um, that I think um, many people in the medical field uh, either don't know much about it, um, maybe have questions, uh, wonder if it's the right thing to prescribe to some of their patients. Um, and so uh, not only do we need to educate the public, but we need to educate all the people in the, in the healthcare field so that if they do have a patient who comes in, um, and certainly with, um, with PEP, which you need to take um, right after you think you've been infected, mm -hmm. you don't want to be talking to your doctor or healthcare provider and they don't really understand what that is. Sure. Or if you're going to see your, you know, your, your, your physician and, and then you, you mentioned that you want to get PrEP, if you sort of have the relationship where you can talk mm -hmm. about that, um, you don't want, uh, you know, your doctor to maybe ask, you know, uncomfortable questions or he says, well, then maybe that's just not for you. But so there's just a lot of education that needs to be taking place on, on both sides um, so that really we can sort of have access to all the new medical uh, advances that are being made and making sure that anybody who uh, requests it is getting the right answer back from their physician. Okay, now getting back to the initiative, will it do just that? Is it going to be education for the community at large as well as professionals? Absolutely. Those are the sort of the, 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 the two parts to it. Um, one is just informing people ab about PrEP. Um, in New York City, they have a great campaign. We'll see if we do something like it uh, on buses where they'll have um, um, images of, of, of people and uh, then they'll have uh, the, the, the logo condoms plus PrEP and uh, because you know taking PrEP just isn't enough you have to protect yourself and that's where the condoms come in mm -hmm. if you really want to be you know be um, zero in, in infections you, you know you sort of need both so I foresee some sort of campaign like that informing people about safe sex informing them about prep sure. so that they can sort of know what that is and uh, able to have that dialogue with their health care provider but then we really need to do a lot um, with the health care providers a lot of doctors just don't know about it and we need to inform them as well and that's what I was doing a little bit of my homework and realized and found out that there were 30 percent in the in the county who are um, not engaged in adequate medical care, you know, for this type of a disease. Um, now, well, getting to zeros, that's 
what we just said, that's going to educate and hopefully turn that percentage around? Yeah, no, what we need, to, I mean, we, uh, we always have to continue to encourage people to get tested. Sure. Um, and, you know, and with, again, with all of the, uh, the medicines that are, that are now out there, you can really reduce your viral load, which means mm -hmm. that you're going to be less apt to then transmit it to somebody else, all getting back to this whole thing about zero transmissions. Yes. But if someone doesn't know that they're, um, that they're HIV positive, um, that's not good for their own health, but that they then, de depending on uh, if they're doing unsafe sex, then they, they might be able then to infect someone else. And so we want to stop that um, connection as well. So, you know, get tested, but then if you find out that you're, that you're positive, um, well, then if you go, you, you need to be able to go to your, to your uh, medical home and hopefully then they can, you know, provide you the information that you need and maybe get you on prep or, or whatever it is. And so you don't want testing just by itself if all of a sudden you don't have the knowledge that the healthcare provider needs if you'll sure. be able to tell um, him or her that you, that you are positive. And so I sort of see this as a, a very holistic uh, campaign that um, is, is going to be needed to inform everybody that's sort of involved um, in the whole disease. And so it will kind of be, go for s full, circle full circle of, you know, informing the community, informing the, the professionals, and back to the community again, right. and individuals. That's terrific. That sounds like a great initiative. Now, will this be at a, at a particular uh, extensive cost to the taxpayers? Well, we don't are exactly sure what the cost is, yeah. is, is going to be. Um, uh, I did this, what they call a referral, uh, which was approved by the board, mm -hmm. and I'm hoping that we can allocate um, money at what we call the, our mid-year budget session, which happens in February, and so staff now is looking at what the cost of this sort of public campaign mm -hmm. uh, might be, and then we'll, we would need to get it approved um, right. by the county. So uh, we'll have a better idea of what the overall cost will be. Um, my feeling is that, you know, if we can really, you know, save lives uh, by doing this, um, the cost shouldn't be our number one concern. Uh, but all of the education um, with all of the health care plans and all the physicians and all the clinics, um, there really isn't the, uh, a direct cost in that. It would certainly be sort of an employee cost of trying to do that kind of work. But I, I don't see that being very expensive. Um, to, as far as medical professional goes, in San, Santa Clara County Medical Center, has a what's called a pace clinic, right? And uh, and they have up to date treatment and testing. Um, so I think uh, perhaps uh, this initiative will also uh, be inclusive and work with these folks. Yes, the pace clinic um, has been uh, in operation probably for about thirty years. Okay. Um, anyone who um, uses the county as their medical home um, has access to the pace clinic. Um, it's, it's really, it's been on the forefront. It's where people can go, feel very comfortable. Mm -hmm. uh, the doctors and the nurses are, are very knowledgeable about, you know, people with HIV and, and the proper type of care. Um, so we're really lucky to have that. But, you know, when you think of all the doctors, all the clinics, uh, depending on where you have your health insurance, if you're on right. Medi-Cal, you can go on and on and on. Mm -hmm. um, there's no guarantee that uh, that healthcare professional is going to know about um, uh, the, the proper way to treat somebody who ends up mm -hmm. being HIV positive or who doesn't want to uh, uh, become infected. So um, the PACE clinic, I think, is, is somewhere uh, that other people can go to, other professionals can go to and learn about um, the kind of uh, treatment and education that happens there and then take that back uh, to their own clinic or hospital. Well, it sounds like Santa Clara County is really doing its best to put the, the right foot forward in